The talking, nagging, lucha watching, puro viewing, indie supporting, drinking, cursing, son of a gun of a podcast. Join former pro wrestler and promoter Dave Dynasty and co-host Ike Isaacs as they talk wrestling and interview those within the business. Bringing positivity back to pro wrestling. This is the Dave Dynasty Show. Greetings and welcome to the Dave Dynasty Show. I am your host, Dave Dynasty. And we got a special episode today. We're going to talk about Joey Ryan and Vader. And we'll tell you how all that relates here in a moment. Joining me at the beginning of the show here to discuss this is Marlon Miller. Marlon, how are you? Uh, I'm doing well, and I just want to say that the check clear. That's the only reason I'm even here to talk about Joey Ryan. Yeah, well, I, I figured the accountant was good and carried on, but uh, we'll, we'll we'll discuss future, future terms at a later date. So. Of course but, uh, we can, of course we can. But uh, the the truth of the matter is, we're we're not discussing Joey Ryan in a negative, uh, positive light. So I, I don't think there's going to be any issues here. But uh, the reason we're going to talk about Joey Ryan is because there's been a little viral clip going out on Twitter, and uh, it was posted, I think, just by some Twitter account that posts just various clips from matches and different things. And it was I uh, have it right here. It's a uh, grapple clips. Grapple, it was April twenty sixth. Right. Yep, and it was a uh, it was a Vader working a guy in the corner. During a, a next bit or a, a an enhancement match uh, from what I'm guessing is what around the mid '90s, probably. I don't know if there was a date on it, but I'm guessing it had to be around the mid '90s, right? It's WWF because I saw Cornette in the corner. So yeah, so it was Vader when Vader was in WWE, and uh, and later the the guy in the corner is Tim McNeeny, and uh, we got I've got him on the show here later. I actually talked to him and, and got his side of this whole whole incident. Uh, but anyway, this clip was out there, and do you have the Joey Ryan retweet there by chance? I have it right here. It says, give me Kenny Omega making his enhancement talent look credible and a threat over Vader taking liberties, a guy just trying to get a job. Oh. Thankful, thankful that the bully culture in wrestling has declined <laughs> and that we're evolving past it. Yeah. Okay. So let's dissect this, and I don't even know where to begin. Oh, well, let's, let's just begin by... You go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, let, let's start with the, one, of the, one of the easy part of it. It says a guy trying to, what did it say, trying to get a job? Tim McNeely yeah. was not trying to get a job. He was not, there was no, and, and he says it himself, he was not looking for a contract. He was a college student at this time who had been trained by Killer Kowalski and was doing TV work uh, for the WWE at that time. He wasn't looking and for a job. <laughs> he was. <laughs> how many, until, I mean, when did that switch over? Did it go from, you know, because Mick Foley, when he started, when he teamed with Shane Douglas against the British Bulldogs, he was just a yeah. up-and-coming guy who was just a student. He wouldn't, get, he wouldn't even sure if he was going to make it a career. Yep, yep. That, well, that's why McNeely was. He, McNeely, I don't think he was looking to make it a career at all. It was something he was doing. He enjoyed doing it. But like I said, he was in college. And, uh, you know, he it, it was what it was. And as he said, it was an honor to get in there with Vader and work Vader. Vader didn't do a lot of this enhancement type stuff, these matches. And uh, so he was thrilled. And point blank, you'll hear this from McNeely later. Vader did not stiff him in this thing. He he, he wasn't unsafe. He wasn't unprofessional. There was none of that. None of this bullying no. that Joey Ryan is talking. To quote McNeely himself, who was right there in the ring <laughs> taking this, <laughs> he said, "You know, Vader did his job. He was a professional. He made it look good. And the fact that he worked Joey Ryan pretty much in this, who." is supposed to be in the business it is befuddling to me. Um, <laughs> but he I, worked I, half the boys. He worked. Half, I'm pretty sure he worked half of today's people who consider themselves wrestlers, but that's not the story altogether. Well, yeah, I think you have to say quote unquote wrestlers. It, it, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's part of this, this culture that's out there of that, you know, everybody should be a part. Everybody should have this chance. And, and, I know, I know you're also a, a huge fan and a follower of Jim Cornette, as, I, as am I. And, of course. And Cornette always brings up the great point. And, in, and going back to this, this match with, that Kenny Omega had on AEW Dynamite, which triggered this, was him working a guy who does not have an AEW contract, is clearly there as an enhancement talent, and they had this very long competitive match. And as Cornette points out, which I don't know why everybody has such a trouble grasping this, is all that does 
is undermine the value of Kenny Omega. Uh, I don't understand it either. I'm still trying to figure out. This isn't this isn't a guy you've established. This isn't like a, like he even said George South versus Ric Flair. This isn't someone like who's I, I don't get it either. I'm still I'm still trying to grasp the whole concept of everyone should be in the business because <laughs> you know I came to the realization years ago. I'm just a fan who loves to write, collect stuff, and everything else, and I just I, I'm better off doing that because yep. I'm safer in the seat than I am in the uh, ring, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Well. I- See, and that's like, I, I wrestled for a few years, it, just local, just small stuff. And it, it didn't take me long to realize. I enjoyed it. I loved it. But it, it didn't take me long to realize, you know what, I, I wasn't going anywhere with it. I, I, it was what it was. I did what I did. And, it was, you know, it, it, and that's, it, I didn't have these aspirations or these dreams. But the fact of the matter is, talking about the Kenny Omega match, AEW tries to portray Kenny Omega as one of the best wrestlers in the world. And we're not going to debate that. I, I have my views on that. But. That's what they try to, to, to paint him as. And they try to portray that he's always this, you know, considerable contender for the world title. And he is this and he is that. And then they took Joe Nobody, who's not even on the roster, who was competitive with what they're stating is one of the greatest wrestlers they have. So that, to me, you didn't build up a guy as much as you cut down a guy. It, it, it's, it's not the way it's supposed to work. And I don't, I just, I don't know. I, I don't know what it is <laughs> that causes this. I, uh, it, it's a flipping of the mindset. I don't know. And to this day, today is May 4th, 2020. I have yet to see one Kenny Olivier, Kenny Omega match. I have never seen one of his matches ever. Don't plan to, don't want to. Every time I see him, I saw him in an interview. He comes across as very, not just, not just cocky, because I like cocky. He comes across as very douchey. He comes across as trying to turn wrestling into an art, and I go, you know, I, I, I can look at Picasso. I still don't get it. I think you're looking at wrestling, and you still don't get it. Yep, yep. He, he looks at wrestling like I look at, you know, the Mona Lisa. I go, yeah, it's pretty and all, but, you know, what's the context behind this? Yeah, and and I don't know then <laughs> what it is that that triggered Joey Ryan <laughs> to to put this tweet out there. I, I, I guess it's just the attention. Uh, it's just the, yeah. he, he likes to, to be frank, I, I, I have no doubts in my mind Joey Ryan loves it when his name is in Jim Cornette's mouth because he loves that attention. He loves that exposure. He loves the fact that he is, he's being exposed to many, many more people than he does on his own merits. And I think it's what he does. I think he just puts his stuff out there to try to trigger people and, and get a little bit of attention. on that, That's what he is. He's, he's, you know, he's the shock jock of professional wrestling. And, and I, then he blocks you on Twitter. So what's the point of even interacting with him? I know it. I understand. I, I don't understand. <laughs> but but I mean, he's taken. I don't know. He he's pulled two different things that are not applicable. He's he's completely misinterpreted this Vader thing. I mean, you know, like I said in this interview later, you know, Tim McMeany he Meany says he, he he wasn't hurt. He was none of those blows landed. He says, as a matter of fact, if you watch close enough, there's a point where Vader has to tell McNeeny, okay, you can go down now. Because he told McNeedy to stay up and take some of these blows. And he said McNeedy didn't know he, they weren't laying in. So Vader had yeah. to you know, tell him when to go down because there was no other cue for him to do it. <laughs> so, And, and uh, you, said, you said you were speaking to him, and I was going to let McNeedy speak for himself because I wasn't going to put words in anyone's mouth. Because unlike some people in that culture, I actually can let, let people speak for themselves and <laughs> don't. Don't don't put words in other people's mouth and po- don't put thoughts in anyone else's head because I like context. What a concept, right? Yep. Yeah. Th- th- those are those are words people need to learn in these days, and particularly in this what you call clickish. I call it a clickish mm-hmm. type mindset where Joey Ryan just thinks, "Oh, I can just say this and oh, get the following, and people will like me." When you know he's got, I'm looking at it right now, and as of today. Um, he had only 333 retweets when in reality, you know, that's nothing compared to someone like say a WWE star who's actually legitimate, who would defend Vader yep. tooth and nail or, or Jim Cornette who got a thousand more retweets. I'm pretty sure I got to look it up, yeah. but it's, you're, and then you did hear the claims that he basically runs the dive bar circuit in California. Yes. And if you don't do, 
And again, again, I don't know this for a fact because I'm, I don't live there. I don't know anything about the wrestling in California. But it's not over the moon to believe that no. he would go up to people and say, if you don't take the dick spot, I can't book you at all. Sure. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, and, and, and this is also behind the curtain. I'm scheduled to be going down to meet the book and the territory crew at X-Rated this June in New Orleans. He's going to be down there, and I'm having second thoughts what I'm going to do during that match, <laughs> whether or not I'm going to chant bully at him or something else. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the, the ironic twist in it. There's here, Here's the thing. Everybody, everybody wants to say, oh, people should be allowed to like what they want. And that's true. People can like what they want. But yeah. if you like that, then you don't like professional wrestling because that's not professional wrestling. The, the goal, the purpose of professional wrestler is to professional wrestling is to make you believe. It is to simulate real combat, real fighting, real competition to make you believe at some point, even if you know it is to make you think, wait a minute, maybe that, at least a, a moment or something, maybe that's real. Or to say, okay, I don't know what they're doing in there, but I know that in a real fight, that guy would whip my ass. And it doesn't matter yep. anyway. So what they're doing is it's not professional wrestling. It's it's whatever they want to call it, whatever form of entertainment. So and that's that like you said, that was the ironic twist is he here he is calling someone who's no longer alive, who cannot defend himself, mm -hmm. who cannot say mm -hmm. anything, and calling mm -hmm. him a bully. And then others are saying, Well, but <laughs> you're a bully. You know, you you are you are you are blackballing people or not using people to in order if they're not agreeing to do something to get you over. And yeah. so it, that that's the irony. And I know now I know Vader's son Jesse still runs his account and I know he's come out and, and, and tweeted some and said uh you know his, no, his dad it was was it was always a professional and, and, and mm -hmm. never done anything like that. And um I don't know. It's the whole scenario is just uh, I, I, it's, it's, I hate it. I hate everything, but I, 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 of course I hate everything about Joey Ryan period anyway, but I hate, I hate his yeah. approach to this. I hate how he's taken something that has no, no relevant context, put it out there like this, <laughs> called someone a bully who can't defend themselves. And it is, it's just a mess. And I, I guarantee you, Joey Ryan did not expect Tim McNeeny to pop out of nowhere and say, wait a minute. <laughs> I was the other yeah. guy. Well, he's he's trying to, he's trying to do anything he can to get over that sort of, you know, bully culture Twitterverse mindset, which uh, is trying to take over the wrestling business in certain circles, and we can discuss that offline. <laughs> but it's like it's like no, yep. no, that's not Twitter is not the world. Twitter is not the United States. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's I'm on it, but trust me, it's like. I think I represent a big. I think I help represent a bigger fan base that doesn't get on Twitter. Why? Because we have lives, sure. as MJF said. You know, <laughs> it's like you know, uh, uh, yeah. I used to play video games, but guess what happened? I lost my virginity, unlike you clowns. <laughs> um, he, I'm sorry. Uh, this is what happens when you call me with like ten minutes notice. Uh, <laughs> but no, uh, jo Joey Joey Ryan does represent everything that's wrong with the wrestling business and. I heard Brian West call him the biggest idiot, and I wouldn't even give him that courtesy. I just think he's a damn fool who just thinks he can. Well, he couldn't get over as like an intergender guy, mm -hmm. so then he does this dick flip stuff, and everyone now is taking it from Katrina to poor Ken Shamrock, and yeah, just it, it's one of those. I have a I just whenever I see anything in professional wrestling, my first question is. Is that garnered to sell tickets, right. or is that garnered to gain publicity towards you? And I'll give Joey Ryan credit; it does garner publicity towards him. Yep. It's unwanted, it's <laughs> bad, but he does draw certain people that'll look at him and laugh at him while he does it. But you know, well, that's that's great for him to do so. But uh, uh, how's that Easter basket helping him out there too? Uh, that's what I want to do. Yeah, yeah, that. He, he he conveniently overlooks that, doesn't he? Every time, <laughs> but oh yeah. Also, uh, also he concedes to anal rape as long as you think it's funny, and as long as you think it's funny too. <laughs> yeah, that tweets out there too. And and again and again, if you ever feel the need to delete your tweet, you shouldn't have tweeted it out in the first place. Oh yeah, yeah, it's never deleted. Just... <laughs> but but that's I mean, okay. So he so he has this this little shock Nick thing, niche thing that he does. 
but how many times, even if you enjoyed it the first time you saw it, how many times can you see it before it, it loses that, that value to you? And, and Joy Ryan never has, there's not a second act. It's the same thing over and over again. So it's, and I, and I hear, I always hear people make these comparisons to, to wrestlers of the past of, oh, well, so-and-so did the same things. Yeah, but you know what, don't, don't speak of Joy Ryan in the same breath as some of those men because it's, those guys drew money and Joy Ryan doesn't. And, uh, I get it, but here, but here's the other thing to that. And to that point, wrestling at that time, you only saw those certain people every so often. You awesome. didn't see them all the time. We didn't have the internet to show this clip over and over again. Nope. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have ice live streaming, so I could watch a show in Canada, or I could watch a show in Mexico, or I could watch a show somewhere else live as it happens. Yep. So that way, when they come to my town, well, I've already seen them. Yep. And why would I? Why would I want to? I've already seen them. Why would I want to see them live unless I want to meet them? You know. Yep. Um, and I'm not knocking people who like that stuff. That's fine. That's great. Have fun. I don't. And I don't. And I don't support it. That's just me. It's that. That's my. That's the way I protest. I guess you could say. Yep. But um, how how many times can you watch Spaceballs in a row and laugh at before the jokes aren't funny anymore? Because yeah. you know them all by heart. How many people will go to Monty Python in theaters and ruin it because you know every spot by heart? It just becomes annoying after a while. Then you got to go away from it, do something different, and then do a callback. Yep, that's right. That that's that that, that that's how entertainment is supposed to work. Yeah. And do, I don't think Joey Ryan's gonna and call me on this now. I don't think Joey Ryan's gonna have the same value in five years he has right now. No, I don't. Whether think so. it's whether it's more or less is not my concern, but he's not going to have the same value. Why? Because everyone's going to see this, and you, uh, WWE's not going to sign him unless he changes his act, and he's not going to. I don't know the story behind AEW, but I did hear rumblings. They tried to get him like behind. They tried to get him behind closed doors, and it didn't work. The because they knew if they tried to put that act on national television, it wasn't going to work. Yep. Yeah, put that act on national television. Have Penelope Ford grab his junk and have her do a flip and see how long that gets you. Yep. I mean, that has to be telling because, you know, he, he's tight with all those guys. They're all that those South Cal, you know, guys. And, the, you know, he was on the being the elite with the Young Bucks all that time and everything else. And But he's not there. With all You know, all the other friends are in AEW, but, mm -hmm. but he's not. So there has to be – there's something there, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it doesn't translate to a national stage. It doesn't translate to, you know, worldwide television. It it's it's inappropriate, but when you keep it underground, you know it doesn't. You know, I guess it doesn't throw as many flags. I guess I, I don't know, but I don't know what you what you what you can do in a dive bar over the age of twenty one is practically you know legal at this point is yep. anything at this point. But I just don't. Do, 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 does Joey Ryan and Kenny Omega actually understand how this business is supposed to work, or did they watch WWE program and go, I can do that? That's you know, there's a there, there there was a reason why until the '90s wrestling was a closed circle and you didn't get in unless you knew somebody. Sure. Yeah. You didn't get in unless someone liked you, took a liking to you, and to that point, you know, you were trained you were trained to protect the business. Yep. You were trained to, you know, don't do anything stupid, don't do be safe, be, do what you do, and do uh, and don't do this dick spot stuff. I mean, he's gonna he's gonna be in Louisiana, and I guarantee you, if Bill Watts was in the vicinity, he'd shoot him. <laughs> That's right. Well, and you, and you had, had to, to see that. you had to earn your spot. You had to pay your you know pay your dues, everything else, and and you always hear people yes. cry out about that. Well, that shouldn't be the way. that's the way it is in every profession. No one <sighs> no one starts at the top. You you know whatever no. you do, you have to gain experience. You have to learn that occupation and, and that field. That's the way it is with everything. So why? Sh why should it be there? I mean, no one, and even if you want to convey it and relate it to the entertainment industry, what well, you know, no one walks right in and suddenly on their first appearance wins an Oscar. It's it, you know, it doesn't do that. You do stage shows and you do community mm -hmm. theaters and you you do commercials and you you do things to learn the craft and, and to learn it. Why is this different? Why is exactly? There I, because it's the freak show, I guess. I don't know. Well. That's the only thing I could think of. It's the cl closest thing to a freak show we got nowadays. And people try to make the collusions between wrestling and acting, and I'm like, it's completely different. Yeah, it is. Because acting, you're just reading a script. But in wrestling, in the way 
I was led up to believe, and the way I enjoy it the most, is that it's just you dialed to 11, and it feels more real, and I can believe you. It's the believability. Yep. I, I go into a I, I go into a theater. I know Robert Downey Jr. is not Tony Stark. I know he tries to act like it all the time. I know, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Chris Hemsworth is not Thor. I know that Chris Evans is not Captain America. His politics are completely different. I get that, but you know, I can suspend my disbelief in that. But in wrestling, I, I was taught to believe that you know uh, Vader was a complete badass that you didn't mess with. Hence why he beat up guys in the ring. It looked like he beat up guys in the ring in two minutes because he needed to come across as a badass. The reason you do this, and here's your lesson, Joey Ryan, the reason for enhancement matches is to put people over so the matches in the ring that you saw live or you paid to see, emphasis on the pay to see, mattered. That's right. No one, no one kicks out of Honky Tonk, Honky Tonk Man's finish until the big blow-off. Why? Because then it matters. Yeah. That's right. If you're gonna if you're gonna do the dick spot every show, then that dick spot doesn't matter. No, it it doesn't. Is that his finisher? I don't even know his finisher. I I, I don't know. I have no idea. I, I know that, and and I'm gonna. Was it the was it the New Japan U.S. title or was it when Cody had the NWA title? Cody had a match with Joey Ryan, but because one of them was injured, they did like an arm wrestling match or something. Um, in Australia, yeah, I recall. That. I don't a, know what it was, but I remember that. I yes. forget which. I know it was over a belt, and it was Joey Ryan's best match because you know <laughs> he actually did what he was supposed to. He lost cleanly, really quickly, which is what you're supposed to do in that case. Uh, yeah. Well, <sighs> uh, it is what it is. But like I said, it's the worst thing in my mind is is him. I, you know, I, it's horrible to me that he calls out someone and tries to paint them as a bully and taking advantage of someone in this position who's not even alive to defend themselves. That's So despite any other, but despite your views on wrestling or whatever else, that's just a horrible human being that would do something like that. Someone who is widely why, respected in the business. And why, and why would you in the first place, when, like I said, like you say, he's not around to defend himself. He's not, around, you know, you're just trying to take a cheap shot to make yourself look good. Yeah. Yep. Which really... Well, uh, okay, you're gonna take it to that tell, like you said, like that tells me kind of person you are. And if I was a promoter, I wouldn't do business with you. I don't care how much money you drew me. Nope, absolutely not, because it shows that he is only out there for himself. So, well, Marlon, thanks for joining us. I think we're gonna take a break. And, <laughs> okay. Uh, let you we, let you blow that. We're gonna take a break, and then I'll run that interview with uh, Tim McNeeny. So everybody, stick around. Hey, make sure you visit DaveDynasty.com. That is your central hub everything within the world of the dave dynasty show from there you can find links to follow us on all of our social media accounts we are on facebook twitter instagram and of course youtube which you will want to subscribe to our youtube channel we have lots of classic wrestling every episode of the podcast and other exclusive features there while you're at davedynasty.com check out the links to help financially support the show that is how we keep this free every week you can go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash The Dave Dynasty and buy a shirt to help us out. PayPal.me slash The Dave Dynasty to make a one-time financial contribution. Patreon.com slash The Dave Dynasty to make ongoing monthly contributions. Or you can click our affiliate links for Amazon.com and HighSpots.com. No additional charge to you, but it helps us out. Thank you for your support and check out DaveDynasty.com. Complete your experience The Dave Dynasty Show. Since 2001, drug companies dumped a billion opioid pills in West Virginia, causing over 3,000 overdose deaths and thousands of babies born addicted by no fault of their own. I'm attorney Stephen New. If you're the grandparent or guardian of a child born with neonatal abstinence syndrome, call me. I'll help you seek just compensation. Call the law offices of Stephen P. New at 1-844-BAD-PILLS before time runs out. All right, and I am now joined by a guy named Tim McNeeny. And a lot of you guys out there might be saying, who is Tim McNeeny? But if you have been on Twitter recently and seen the spat with Joey Ryan and Jim Cornette and many others, well, you might be familiar with this name recently. So, Tim, thank you for joining us here. Well, thanks for having me. And, and the clip I'm referring to on Twitter recently is an old match uh, with Vader. And uh, he's got a, a gentleman in the corner, 
and he's working him over. And Joey Ryan brought this to everyone's attention. And the thing is, you are the gentleman in the corner in this clip. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So before we Lucky. dive in, yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, before we dive into it, let's let's get a little background on you, Tim. How how did you get involved with wrestling? How did you get started working? Um, I started with Killer Kowalski back in 1991. Okay. Um, really, just that's it. Started from there, and then just kind of went went on a whim to try it. And then just started getting booked through Kowalski, and you know that was just kind of went from there. Okay, so you so you worked a lot of the Northeast type stuff in, and uh, were you? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I was I was a full time college student at UMass Amherst, so I, you know, I did a ton of TV, but I, you know, it, it was you know ninety percent drivable stuff. And yeah. Back then, back then they taped you know weeks at a time and sure. over the course of like three days, so you could knock out. You would do like, you know, I'm basically on the road for three or four days with them and then they'd have their tv for weeks right okay so, so, so. this clip when I, I didn't even look when is this clip from what when's this match from I, honestly i don't i don't remember i the only thing that stuck out to me when i saw it is like i'm wearing this singlet that i had got for some some special reason i don't even remember what that was really but i never wore it on tv be just Never. So yeah. I wore it on this case because I had just worked Vader like I think a month before this, and um, they just wanted a different look and a different match out of it. So this is the one I threw on. That, that it just you know that's how I remember this was. So I'm assuming this is like in '94. Okay, maybe '93. Right. Of course, yeah, sometime in that period, time period. Now, the reason this clip is kind of taking some life here lately is because it was put out there by a Twitter account. I don't even remember what it is. Just something I think that just tweets basic clips from matches and stuff. Joey Ryan retweeted this with a commentary that he's glad to be involved in wrestling in the current state when it's past the, I think he used the term bully phase or, or something. He referred to Vader as a bully. Trying right. to imply that Vader was stiffing you and, 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 and taking advantage of you. So this is, the floor is yours, Tim. What, to tell us, is that in fact what Vader was doing in this moment? No, I mean, that's how most of those guys back then worked. Um, you know, they were good. They may not look like they were killing you, but sure. if they were really killing you, you'd be dead. Right. Um, you know, especially when these weren't, you know, once a week. You know, you would, guys like me, you'd probably work, you know, two times a night. You know, I could have worked somebody else right before or right after that. I don't even remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, they, they, they take care of you. They understand that you're only in there to... Make them look incredible. That's all you're there for. Sure. So they're not going to just sit there and beat the shit out of you for no reason, unless you do something in the back of course. or do something that rubs the wrong way. Then you go, then you're targeted. But right, and as yeah. you as you stated, you had just worked Vader recently, yeah, and, and and had no issue. So if there was, I mean, more than likely not, if there was an issue, you probably wouldn't have worked him necessarily again, right? I mean, oh, you don't really have any say in it. Sure, but, sure. Uh, I'm, but I'm but, in. To, but to be honest with you, you know, he you know he was excited because my thing was you know obviously I, you know I didn't. My dream was not to be full time. I was just sure. got caught up in getting paid because I was a college student. Um, but I could bump my ass off, so yeah, everybody liked to bump me. Right. So I was a good bump and seller. So when I worked on the second time, this is when you know, because this this came up, and I was like, oh boy, they should see this whole match because it, the very first move in this match is a German suplex, which I remember <laughs> vividly because we came up with that together because he wanted to start some somehow differently. Yeah. And back then I was working like a five hundred pounder. And Perry Saturn, all, you know, interchange every week. I'd probably work those guys one week, the next one one. And they're both the stiffest guys in the world. Right. So Vader, you know, wanted to do something. I said, hey, I can take a really good German from a really big guy. <laughs> and so yeah. he said, you sure? And that's how he started. So once he did that, you know, it was. if you see that video, when he's punching me, uh -huh. he's telling me to go down because I just stood up too long. Uh -huh. None of them registered. It's just, he's like, okay, that's it. You can go down now. Yeah, right. And that's when I go down. But let me ask you this. Now, another phase of this is you got on Twitter, right, and responded to this. A lot of people are claiming it's a very new account, that it wasn't you, that it was someone posing to be you. Is that correct? Yeah, I, well, I'm not I'm not really on Twitter. I got on it about a year or so ago just to see it. I really wanted to see, like, all the crazy, you know, Trump posts and all the crazy <laughs> stuff on it. Yeah. I never got too into it just because I'm a Facebook guy. I'd rather talk to my friends and strangers. Sure. So, But, one of my, you know, a couple of my friends – sent me a link and said check this out and i was like oh you know so i did you know i'm not you know i just wanted to kind of put my two cents in since i'm the one they're getting taken it right but we can put to rest the conspiracy theorists who are saying this is someone else posing as you 
it, it yeah. doesn't come into the fence. So that's that's ridiculous. <laughs> it, but of whatever. course it is. But that's that is how the internet wrestling community works, right there. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to learn about Twitter. It's like who the hell is going to waste their time creating a? You know, it's you know what I mean? Yes, it's well it's crazy. Unfortunately, it does happen, but <laughs> it does. Yeah, it I is, guess so. It, it is a world. So. So tell us how long, how much longer did you work uh, in doing enhancement stuff and all that after this? Um, I think like after, I'm not sure what year was. I just remember the invasion when the invasion angles came in and they mm. bought WCW. Yeah, they said so many guys. They kind of st- unless you were under contract, they sure. they stopped using enhancement guys, You're and right. they bring you in for dark matches and like local house shows, and yeah. so your the TV stuff just kind of started to go away. And they also they were bringing in guys for TV, but they weren't using them as wrestlers; they're using them to be yeah, security yeah, yeah. and all that stuff. So yeah. I'll be honest with you, I was you know I was trained to wrestle, and Kowalski always said you're getting paid to wrestle, not to <laughs> carry a chair or whatever. So that's right. Yeah, so I just kind of stopped taking them. To be yeah. honest with you. So, uh, so do you still watch wrestling? Are you still at all a watcher or a fan or anything anymore? Um, you know, I tried. I really did try. But, um, you know, and NXT is what I tried with a couple of years ago. Because one, one of my best friends in the world is Matt Bloom. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he's the head coach there. Sure. So he'd, yeah. you know, he'd say, check this out. And what do you think? And I was like, oh, it's great. You know, it's athletic. And, and then I just, I don't know, I just kind of got tired and... Yeah, I only I only really watch like the it's the newsworthy you know big stuff, and I I won't watch anything live either. Yeah, well the the reason I ask is how familiar are you with Joey Ryan? I've never met him. I I know the name. I've seen clips, um, but yeah, I don't know him. Okay, so you I mean you see how there's he he does this stance of everyone should be involved in wrestling and 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 wrestling should be for all and everyone should be able to leave live their dream and and the, the former bully. Thing and, and this is a common thing for him. So that's that's just I just didn't know if you had the context yeah, as to why he might have commented. I I do know you know back you know when I kind of just stopped wrestling, it was started to turn to you know kind of, I saw a lot of this stuff where there's people just in it wrestling and there's shows that shouldn't be happening. Right. And when that's that started happening, guys like me, you know, who never really signed a, a big deal with anybody, your money got cut because you know why I would. You know, it just the wrestling product just sucked because people got involved in it who shouldn't even have been in there in the first place. Yep. And that's just where it is now. And I just fell out of love with it when it got the sport aspect came away. Sure. And it turned into that. So, and I guess this is just it. You know, peaking. You know, it's yeah, right. You know, as a Kowalski guy, you know, you're trained pretty hardcore in the old school ways, and and once it starts to change, you know, you'll love it or leave it. Yep. So, so you mentioned Perry Saturn, and and, and, and he's a fellow Kowalski trainee. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, were you around there at the same time? Was him training and, and Triple H training? And oh yeah, yeah, China, yeah, yeah. So okay, so, that, so so I I remember seeing uh, I don't know where it was from an old picture of a group of Kowalski trainees with them in it. Are you in that picture? Perhaps do you? Have I don't know. That? There's so many pictures. Like I said, okay. I was I was a full time college student, so you know I was two hours away from the school. I wouldn't you know once I started. Once I went to college, I started training after my high school year. And yeah. So four years of my first year of training, mm-hmm. my, my first four years of training, I wasn't going that much because I couldn't. I was more just working sure. shows. Yeah. And I'd go anytime I could, but, um, you know, that's how it went. Yeah. So, so as someone then who is, has worked and met Vader, what would you say to someone who would try to imply that, that Vader is a quote-unquote bully? I think everybody is, you know, in, the, in that in, in that time frame, you know, if you, you you're fighting for a spot, that was right. you know, with the, the click was running things, and you know, it was it was pretty edgy. And you, if you're going to go out there and you know work a squash match, you're going to try to look as as best you can, and that's sure. what most that's what all the guys did. I mean, geez, you know, there were some guys that you know you would look on the roster when you walked in, and your name would be next to them, and you know, guys <laughs> would turn white and want to throw up, and you'd be surprised who those names were. They weren't huge men; they were just. Guys would literally kick the shit out of you, and you'd yeah. leave with a black eye or, you know, whatever. But Vader was never really one of those guys. He he honestly didn't do that much enhancement work either. He, right. He, you were kind of lucky to get to work with a guy like him because no one really gets to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, perhaps that's one of the big problems now is that that loss of believability, or at least you know the perception of a believability, and and maybe that's one of the problems. Well, Tim, thank you for joining us and talking sure. and, and telling your side of this. Like I said, this is, kind of became a viral clip in, in, in the internet wrestling community and people talking about it and people being very divided on where they stand on it. And But uh, I thought it was important that you got to tell your yeah. side and, 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 and hear it from you since you were there and, I mean, you have the, the best perspective on it of anybody. So, 
<laughs> yeah, well, any any time. Uh, All right. Rest in peace, Vader. He's a good dude. Great, one of the greatest big men in the history of wrestling. So yeah, absolutely. I'm glad I got to be in there with him. Are you looking for the newest and hottest in the world of pro wrestling? Then check out the amazing action on Powerslam.tv, the biggest indie pro wrestling channel in the world. Get over 6,000 hours of the best events from over 150 of your favorite promotions from 20 different countries around the globe. Brands like Progress Wrestling, Evolve Wrestling, Combat Zone, Defy, PCW Ultra, PWX, Over the Top, Shine, and hundreds of others with fresh content added every day for only $5.99 per month. Get your free trial today at powerslam.tv. Just use promo code DYNASTY. If you are looking for the best books, DVDs, and posters on classic wrestling nostalgia, then you want to visit crowbarpress.com. There are literally dozens of titles there, including biographies of the likes of Bruiser Brody, Ole Anderson, Ivan Koloff, and of course, Dick the Bruiser, as we've spoke about here on the Dave Dynasty Show. You want to visit crowbarpress.com for all of your classic wrestling nostalgia needs. Again, that is crowbarpress.com. All right, and welcome back to the Dave Dynasty Show. Thank you for joining and listening to us today. Special thank to Marlon Miller for coming on and uh, guest co-hosting with me. Uh, Marlon, I'm sure, will be on the show later. We share a lot of like views in of professional wrestling, and uh, we're both very opinionated about things, especially Joey Ryan, who we discussed today. And a very special thanks to Tim McNini for coming on and telling his side of the story on this viral clip of Vader that's been going around Twitter that... Joey Ryan has misconstrued and uh, used to 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 really uh, just bring so much negativity to Vader. I think I mean portraying him to be a bully when it's just not the fact. It's not what happened to that clip. It's a horrible, horrible thing. Uh, hopefully, uh, you enjoyed hearing our side of this and our view of this. And uh, I'm hoping since you listen to me that you agree. That's what I try to do here. I try to discuss what I like to say is real pro wrestling and pro wrestling that I enjoy. And uh, you know what? I'm not afraid to knock what I don't like, and that includes Joey Ryan. <laughs> so uh, special thanks to those guys for coming on and talking and helping me discuss this topic. And, uh, you know, what? do your safe favor. Go out and watch some classic Vader stuff and, and remember how great he was as a big man and as a worker and what a career he had. Uh, but that's it for this week. Thank you for joining us. Make sure you follow us on all the social media platforms and make sure you rate and review us wherever you are and share the episodes. We're on all the podcast platforms, whichever way you listen. We are there. And until next time, wherever you go and whatever you do, be good, be safe, keep on growing, and still stay at home.